dear students today i will talk about birefringences birefringences is basically optical behavior of different materials if you will see the optical behavior of different textile materials it is a combination of reflection transmission and absorption when a light ray incident on textile material a part of the light is reflected from its surface and a part of light is transmitted through the material and remaining light is absorbed by the material so what is the ratio of all these three phenomena that decides the optical behavior or optical appearance of that material apart from these two uh, these three phenomena there are some structural parameters which also influence the optical behavior those are different bonds content of amorphous region and content of crystalline region we will see the wavelength of monochromatic sodium light which is used to analyze the optical behavior of uh, different materials uh, that is 5890 angstrom and uh, the temperature which is considered for this experiment is 20 degrees centigrade the change in light velocity is basically associated with electrical polarization under the influence of electric field the electron participating bond formation are also affected uh, by the presence of this uh, electromagnetic uh, field which is created by the presence of light ray the polarizability can be assigned to each chemical bond uh, now you can see uh, these three figures uh, in one figure you are seeing two different uh, uh, atoms which are uh, very close with each other they have uh, uh, their inner electrons so by the presence of uh, these elect, uh, inner electrons they are forming a, uh, a valency and the valency electrons are been shown by uh, blue color uh, electric field is generated uh, by the presence of these two atoms because one atom has some uh, positive charge and another uh, atom has electro negative charge so the direction of electric field may remain like this as it is mentioned in uh, figure 2 uh, if you will see uh, the figure 3 where uh, the plus and minus both charge they are uh, in between both these atoms so the direction of electric field that will remain in vertical direction uh, <clears throat> this was a gentleman uh, willward snellius his uh, uh, lifetime was uh, started in uh, 1580 and it was ended uh, in 1626 and uh, he was a great scientist he basically invented the refraction uh, is the change in the direction of wave passing from the medium to another to form a gradual change in the medium and uh, as per the invention of uh, uh, willward snellius snell's law that become very popular and this is snell's law is associated with the refractive index of uh, various uh, materials so sin theta 1 upon sin theta 2 equal to v1 upon v2 and this will be n2 upon n1 this is the uh, n2 and n1 is the refractive index of these two materials so here you can see in this picture <clears throat> where uh, light is uh, incident light is here which is forming a angle theta uh, with normal and when it uh, is moving in a in another medium where uh, the met the other medium is denser in comparison of previous medium so the uh, light is uh, light ray is bending towards normal and the angle is theta so uh, as per snell's law th sin theta 1 upon sin theta 2 the light velocity will decrease that will be v2 so v1 upon v2 and that will be the ratio between n2 upon n1 uh there was another scientist his name was uh, erasmus uh, bartholin he was a basically uh, a danish physicist and he was associated with leiden university of copenhagen he observed that images seen through uh, icelandic feldspar that was basically the calcite were doubled and that when the crystal was rotated one image remained stationary while the other image was rotated with the crystal so that was the great invention of that time and that here uh, we can understand this 
what is this uh, calcite crystal? Calcite crystal is a specific type of crystal which consists 78 angle uh, in uh, opposite direction and remaining two directions they have 102 degree angle. So uh, such type of crystal is uh, uh, called as calcite crystal. In another figure you can see suppose unpolarized light that incident on calcite crystal it will break in two part one is called as the ordinary ray and the ray uh, uh, is called as the extraordinary ray. <coughs> Uh, now, please come on on uh, the bireflexes. Bireflexes is the decomposition of incident light ray when it passes through an anisotropic material. And most of our textile materials are anisotropic materials because as the uh, direction change, as the uh, its uh, relative uh, direction change, the property of the material changes. <coughs> if a material has a uniform property inside uh, the material and it will not change when uh, the material direction or material side uh, changes. So those type of materials are comes under the category of isotropic material. But most of our textile materials are anisotropic material. <coughs> Broken two rays travels at different speeds and vibrate in perpendicular direction. When this type of situation will occur, we will get two different type of fringes. One ray travels straight through the crystal and called as ordinary ray. Second ray refracted through the crystal and it is called as the extraordinary ray. The extraordinary ray vibrate in the direction which connects it with ordinary ray. When ordinary ray move faster than extraordinary ray, it gives the positive bidifferences. And when ordinary ray move fast, uh, moves slower than extraordinary ray, it gives negative bidifferences. So some textile fibers gives uh, uh, positive eye references and some textile fiber gives negative eye references. <coughs> Polarized light. The wave model of light uh, that describes the light waves vibrating at right angle to the direction of propagation with all vibration direction being equally probable. Uh, this is referred to as the common or non-polarized white light. In plane polarized light has only one vibration direction and polarized light is most commonly produced by absorption of light having a set of a specific vibration direction in a dichroic medium. Some natural minerals like uh, a tourmaline is capable to produce in plane polarized light. Uh, Dr. Edwin H. Land uh, in 1932 they developed a seed for production of plane polarized light and the, that seed was marketed with a trade name of Polaroid. Any device which is capable of selecting plain polarized light from uh, natural or unpolarized white light is called as a polar or polarizer. A name was, uh, this name was first introduced in 1948 by A.F. Uh, Helimon. Today polarizers are widely used in liquid crystal displays, LCDs, sunglasses, photography, microscopy, and for a myriad of scientific and medical purposes. Uh, there are two <coughs> polarizing filter in a polarizing microscope named as polarizer and the second one is analyzer. The polarizer is a position beneath the specimen stage usually with its vibration as you may fixed in the left to right or east west direction. Although most of these elements can be rotated through 360 degree because we want to capture uh, the fringes of uh, uh, one direction and we want to catch the fringes of uh, uh, opposite direction also. So uh, both polarizer and analyzer should be capable to rotate at 360 degree. The analyzer generally aligned with a vibration direction oriented north south and rotatable on some micros microscopes. Analyzer is placed above the objective lens and can be moved in out of the light path as required. So analyzer can be placed inside the microscope and it can be removed as per the need and as per the situation. When both the analyzer and polarizer are inserted into the optical path, their vibration azimuths are positioned at right angles to each other and when sample is focused properly, we get uh, uh, the bright field. In this configuration, the polarizer and analyzer are said to be crossed. This situation is called, called as crossed situation with no light passing through the system and a dark view field present in the eyepieces. 
for polarized microscopy the polarizer is uh, positioned in the vibrous uh, vertical illuminator and the analyzer is placed above the half mirror most rotatable polarizers are equipped to indicate the rotation angle of uh, transmitter transmission azimuth the analyzers are uh, rotated either 90 degree or 360 degree in advanced microscopes the polarizer and analyzer are the essential components of polarizing microscope but other desirable features are also included without the application of uh, polarizer and analyzer we can't estimate the wire resistance value of different textile fibers uh, this is the concept of double refraction or wire resistance suppose there is a isotropic material which is uh, uh, shown in this uh, uh, top figure here this is isotropic material where all atoms they are uh, placed homogeneously and material has the homogeneous density uh, at each and every part of this material but here this is an isotropic material where the material density is different at different places that's why the double refraction uh, is happening in an isotropic material and single uh, refraction is happening in case of isotropic material so here uh, this is a long chain uh, amorphous structure and this is a long chain semi crystalline structure if the material is completely amorphous that will come under the category of isotropic material if material is semi crystalline the material will become an isotropic in nature uh, so the sample preparation for uh, bi-refuses measurement is a uh, tricky and tricky uh, exercise. So textile fibers must stretch but not stressed. Where if, if the fiber is stressed, the molecular chain will get elongated along, along the direction of peptide stress. So by refuses value will change. So fiber must stretch but not stressed. Uh, after straightening of textile fiber fixed, uh, it must fix from both end. Uh, on glass slide as uh, you are you can see here it is straight but not the stretch and both ends are fixed by uh, means of cellulite then a very small drop of paraffin oil is uh, used to put on uh, fiber and then the cover slip is placed the purpose of uh, placing this uh, uh, oil of paraffin oil to remove the air uh, uh, in between glass slide and cover slip if air will remain present then uh, then glass then air then again glass so uh, refraction dense to rare to dense so different type of refraction will take place and we will not get the clear cut picture of bi-references uh, now here you can see the polarized light microscope uh, uh, microscope is shown here and and the, this is the uh, line diagram or conceptual diagram of this one and this is the actual picture of this microscope which is shown here so uh, there will be a light source at the bottom of this uh, uh, microscope then there will be a polarizer to polarize the light and only uh, allow the direction which is vibrating in one direction so this is called as the plane polarized light then it will uh, come here where your specimen has been placed here and uh, actually you can see here then the uh, as per the nature of material and uh, nature of sample the light will broken in two parts that's why here is only red light you can see here red and blue light you are seeing so uh, both are perpendicular to each other so one is uh, ordinary ray another is extraordinary ray. when it will pass through the analyzer uh, the only uh, one plane of the light or the light which is vibrating in one direction that will allow to go ahead so when this light will go ahead uh, the the viewer or the uh, person who is doing this experiment will get the bright field and fringes will become visible this is a, uh, another advanced optical microscope which is uh, used uh, for wide differences measurement here you can see this is a light intensity controller there will be light source here so light intensity can be controlled then this is the fine focus uh, for polarizer and sample this is the sample platform where sample will be placed and this is the coarse focus and this is fine focus uh, to focus the sample at particular place then this is the instrumental switch and this is the, these are the, the optical uh, objective lenses and then analyzer will place so this is a removable analyzer you can insert and you can remove then objective device uh, to select a particular slider 
and this is a digital camera and this is eyepiece. So uh, you can use digital camera or you can use 